problem can happen where you need memory to save the data right and whenever uh, you need a memory to save the data you would be requiring the buffer okay so just try to concentrate on the second board where we are going to discuss uh, the concept of saving packets in memory and then basically where exactly those are required so you understand now that we need some of the packets sorry some of the memory space so whatever i am receiving from the application right i will be saving that into this buffer or this memory i have showcased that memory with the bucket because that is what i couldn't find most relevant to explain this thing to you most uh, relevant analogy to explain this thing to you so continue so try to understand that you are getting continuous stream of data just like a water right and if you do not send it to the uh, receiver right then you need to actually save that information so uh, there is, this information is going into this bucket this bucket is flowing if this information is not going out then this uh, then this buffer uh, then this bucket is going to be continuously fill right and if you are not sending at all then after some time it is going to the water or these bits are going to be spill out of this uh, uh, a bucket which is not a good thing and that is exactly where you go and say uh, mr application please don't send me data right because because i am not able to send it out and my bucket is full my buffer is full right but consider the ideal scenario in which you are sending continuous data out of this bucket and application is sending continuous data into this bucket then basically it is going to be uh, a, a real use case right you are able to send you are able to receive from application uh, so whatever the rate if the rate of sending information is high then this bucket is going to be empty pretty soon but if it is other way around means you are sending pretty slow and the application is sending pretty fast it means that this bucket is going to be filled just try to understand just try to understand this is a stream of water and you will get to know whatever whatever i'm saying but the whole sole point is that you need to understand that there is a buffer required whenever application is sending you data and you are not able to send the data to the receiver side right just try to uh, just try to see that now you are sending this continuous stream or the packets into over the tcp connection and these packets or the segments the unit of data transfer at tcp layer is segment right so i will be using these word interchangeably but try to understand if you i'm talking about transport layer i'm talking about segments right so this segment number 1 segment number 2 which is the responsibility of uh, transport layer to send them out First, it creates these segments, then it sends these segments out of this TCP connection. And when this segment goes out of the TCP connection, it is going to reach to the receiver. Once it is here, again the same problem, right? Suppose you are sending here uh, 170 bytes, suppose, right? But here, this guy is not able to process this much of information. It says that I can process 70 bytes of information. It means that it is okay if this information, whatever it is receiving, then it is only of 70 bytes, right? And I am saying that suppose it is not sending anything to the application now, till now, just presume a scenario. It means that after 70 bytes, this bucket is going to be filled and if you send more information than 70 byte this bucket is going to drop that information which is not going to be good so the good thing is that there must be something through which this receiving tcp or the receiving transport layer should inform the sending transport layer that do not send me more than 70 byte of data right but yes as soon as this data whatever it is in bucket Suppose this application takes the suppose 20 bytes of data, then of, of course here now 20 bytes is free, right? 50 bytes is the is still the is still in the bucket. So 20 bytes are free. So this guy can inform that now. Previously I was saying do not send me, right? Do not send me anything. But now I can say in some other message that please do send me at least 20 bytes of data because now I can process because now my application has took my application has took uh, some of the data out of my bucket, right? 
just try to understand from the real life examples guys this bucket is to store your stream of water in this case your sender is sending at 170 bytes rate but you are able to your bucket capacity only 70 byte considering the fact you are not sending anything to the application if this bucket is full you can inform the sender that do not send me anything right as soon as this application is trying to pull that data out of this bucket right then you can straight away say that 20 byte is gone now 20 byte then you can straight away inform the application that i can take the data you can uh, you are informing the sender that i can take 20 more data 20 bytes of more data it is as simple as that right but we will go a little bit deeper into there and where the concept of windowing also come right but believe me these things are important to understand if you understand this much the concepts of windowing and the flow control are going to be pretty easy so keep this in mind right and now we are going to discuss where exactly these buffers are going to be required right although you know that one buffer is required at the sender side one buffer is required at the receiver side because these are the places where you need to inform the where you need to store some of the information right so one bucket is required between the application to transport right so application is sending a lot of information to you and if you are not able to send that information out you need to buffer that information and that is called the buffer at the sender side right now you are sending some segments out of this tcp connection suppose this is this can send 100 bytes of information this can receive 70 byte of information it means that uh, after 70 byte of information it can straight away spill it out right or basically it can save something right so you need to implement a buffer or a bucket of a bigger size so one bucket when at the sender side when application is sending something to you one buffer at the transport layer of the receiver side where you are sending uh, some information to you right now there you can argue with me that why there is no buffer when this application when uh, when you are sending some application uh, data to the application right that is not uh, the case of our discussion because here whatever we are saying right application is pushing data to the transport layer at the sender side now your transport layer is pushing data to the uh, destination or the receiver side so wherever there is a push from the other side we implement buffer because you never know how much the data can come to you but at the receiver side or the destination the application actually pulls the data from your bucket your transport layer and if it is pulling the data it is up to the application because application if see if it is free it is, it is going to take the data otherwise not it is as simple as that so in case of pull mechanism we do not require any buffer because it is the application responsibility how much it wants to so whenever it is free it is getting some data out of this bucket so no bucket or is required in the flow between transport layer to application at the receiver side right so now what exactly we are going to discuss we are going to discuss only this buffer only this buffer and the reason is we are not uh, we are not going to concentrate much on uh, the flow control between application and the transport layer we are only going to discuss the flow control between tcps right between sender tcp and the receiver tcp and who is controlling that only this bucket right so this bucket is not going to be required between application and transport right and the reason is we are not going to discuss it that this is this doesn't comes uh, into the uh, what we can say into the area of tcp right although it is implemented so just i was just trying to give you an analogy where these buffers are required actually this buffer is required but we are not going to explain it we are just talking about the flow control between sender transport and the receiver transport and that is it and receiver transport is going to control how much data the sender should send uh, and if it required to send this it is going to save this into the buffer similarly the receiver is going to send some data and 
the sender is going to uh, store that information and that is why one buffer there so i am pretty sure till this point you should understand you know that there is a requirement of buffers right and which we are uh, implementing and we are going to discuss uh, the flow control between sender transport and the receiver transport okay so enough on this buffering part uh, now let's actually and and i would like to uh, say please have this concept in your memory in your buffer so that whenever we uh, whenever we are going to come to the flow control topic uh, this these things should be in your mind okay so having said that let's go and talk about data transfer okay again pretty interesting thing so you all know we have discussed till this point right and what is this point we have one client here any client and we have server here these two guys want to talk uh, to each other so first thing first what they are going to say they are going to create a tcp three-way handshake which is just nothing client is here server is here client is saying mr server you are there if you are there i want to send some of the messages using this sequence number right the sequence number is going to start from this guy server is saying yes i am here uh, and i want to send some information because this is a two-way communication client is sending some data to server server is going to send some data to the client and that is why server is also saying i can acknowledge whatever you are sending and up and along with that, I am going to send some new data, uh, some of the data to you, and which is going to be start from this number. And this uh, is again sent into the SYN packet. This is SYN. This is SYN plus ACK from the server side. And then basically uh, your clients they acknowledge. So I'm not discussing uh, that thing into much detail. You can go, always go and, and watch the previous session recording. And by the way, guys, that recording is now available to everybody, right? So that is just the basic TCP three-way handshake. You just go through it, understand the concept of sequence number acknowledgement. It is publicly available, okay, on my YouTube channel. So now, once this handshake is done, once this handshake is complete, now we are going to send the data over this uh, connection, whatever we have sent, right? 